Hello, 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 and welcome back to K3.7. Okay. This is on page 92 or 62 if you're in the stable packet. All right, these are parallel. So we know corresponding angles are the same. There's, there's a bunch of different ways to get this. Let's see. Um, this is x, and then this is corresponding, so this is x. This is x because of uh, vertical. Vertical angles. Uh, vertexical, across this vertex. Okay, great. Then corresponding. Okay, great. Then 115? No! 180 minus 115. Which is, let's see here. I'm not good at math or anything, but I believe it is... Five. All right. What about this one? Well, vertical down to here, 75 degrees, corresponding. So these are equal. Um, those those parentheses, parentheses are there for us to realize that the whole thing is the degrees of this. But once we plug it in to its side, we don't. The parentheses aren't doing anything, so I'm not going to even write them. Whoops. It's <laughs> focusing too much on sound effects, I guess. There we go. All righty. Two minutes in. Two pro two problems, two minutes. Okay, so what happened here? They added these angles up. It's 180 because the linear pair. Also, that adds up to 180. So what are these? One and two? And three and two? Oh, these two add and these two add. Oh, so they're going to end up proving one and three are the same. Um, because they both add up to 180, um, they both must add up to equal each other. If they equal each other, you can subtract out and measure angle two. And last, and then once the angle measure angle two is gone, you have measure angle one equals measure angle three. Oh, one equals three. Oh, in other words, you just proved the vertical angles theorem. It's a proof because it doesn't matter what the angles are. This is always true. This line will always add up to 180. That line will always add up to 180. And then you can always chunk out this out of both of them. And the leftovers is these, and they're the same, no matter what degrees they are. That's why it's a proof. All right, so that's valid. Uh, you can rotate angle one so that it lands on angle three. Since the lines are straight, we know that uh, that is a 180 degree angle. Oh, the lines themselves are making 180 degrees. Okay, good. Yes, lines are 180 degrees of rotation if you wanted to rotate them. So rotating 180 degrees will cause the lines to land back on themselves. Okay, good. This confirms that angle one will land on angle three. Hmm. I, it's much easier for me to see that four will land on two. I don't know. I think it's the wideness or the ver the vertical stack of one and three. I'm very much better on left to right. Anyway, also valid. Uh, student one uses an algebraic approach. How do you spell algebraic? Algebra. Uh, student two transformational. Transformational approach. Okay, ran out of room there. That's kind of embarrassing. What else do we got? What's the difference between mathematical conjecture, mathematical proof? Conjecture, like a hypothesis not known if true yet but think so. Hmm. 
known node known known agreed upon logical truth. When it comes to proving alternate interior angles are congruent, two students present their reasoning and they both claim to be correct. Examine the reasoning and decide if they are both correct. Explain the logic they are using and what you think about their justifications. Given that these two lines are parallel, prove that the alternate interior angles 3 and 6 are congruent. Alternate interior, okay. Is someone going to ro uh, rotate around the midpoint a bit? They love to do that. Um, that's not helpful, Mr. Abden. Thank you. You can kind of see, though, that if this swings down, if this swings down, it'll be here then. This swings to be here. Yeah, yeah. Should I get out the patty paper? No, we're doing it in our heads now. We can rotate things in our minds. This person took a some sort of approach here. This person took the approach of vertical angles are congruent, corresponding angles are congruent, and substitution. I think that's a, a, some sort of proof from a congruent, based on congruency and corresponding angles, I suppose. And we already just proved vertical angles, so they used a f theorems can be built on theorems. Amazing. Let me let's write that down. If you can't remember how to spell theorems, it starts with the, and then orem. Theorems can be based or built on other theorems. Since it's funny, theorem is kind of based on the word theory, and in pop, pop, popular culture, a theory is like just an idea. But in science and mathematics, a theory actually has a lot of explanatory power. Uh, theories are more uh, true than just ideas, and in mathematics, theorems are absolutely true. They're not just theories. But really, the phrase "just theories" is a is not appropriate in science, science or mathematics. Theories are very serious and very powerful. Uh, since these are angles, we know that uh, corresponding angles those are congruent. Hey, that's what the other person said. Oh, but the measurements are equal. Definition of congruence, and they make a linear pair. So then they substitute. And then they also do it with the other one. Huh. Oh. This is like a hybrid. They like use the vertical angles theorem. Ha ha. They embed the vertical angles theorem inside their explanation. Interesting. So these are more similar than than, than at first glance. Both are correct and similar. They're similar because they both use corresponding angles. Where'd it go? I just saw it. Corresponding. And um, they both use vertical angles, although this person actually goes through the vertical angles algebraic exercise. This person just cites the theorem. It saves time to just cite things, I guess. Prove that alternate interior angles formed by parallel lines cut by transversal are congruent using transformations. Oh, have to use transformations, huh? No problem. Let's do that rotate thing. Which ones are we doing? Alternate interior? Yeah, so like three and six. Yeah, they want three. They want three and six. Excuse me. Oh my gosh, I burped. Okay. Rotate it around. I guess since I'm the teacher, I should use some patty paper. I'm gonna recycle this patty paper.
Here's three. Here's the midpoint. Rotate 180. I guess I should have put a marking on there to verify 180. Okay. This line lining back up with itself is the verification of 180. And now look, three is where the six was. Ta-da. You want to see one more time? I know you do. I want to see it one more time. What about zoomed in? Yeah. One more time zoomed in. Here we go. Don't get bored. This is exciting. Here we go. Three. Six. What's next? Given line BF is parallel to line AD. Well, then why didn't they mark it in the diagram? Sometimes they get lazy and they don't like marking things. Sometimes I like to put a double chevron. But they always have to state it. If they don't mark it, they have to state it. And usually it's both, marked and stated. But at least stated. You always have to state it. Uh, when you're asking someone to prove something, like they are here, prove this, you got to tell them what they know. They can't, you can't just rely on the markings. Well, I mean, I guess you could. It's all up to interpretation. Same side interior angles are supplementary. Hmm. It says uh, we can do it however we want. Same side interior. Okay, let's do four and six. Uh, what do we have to choose? Four, four corresponds with eight. Eight and six are supplementary because they're on a linear, linear pair. So I would do it like this. Linear pairs are sup elementary by definition De definition lines have 180 degrees of rotation Before they line, before they're you know from uh, along a, uh, any angle, one one eighty right there. Okay, linear pairs are supplementary. Six and eight are supplementary, therefore, because they're linear. Linear pair. I'm getting a little sloppy here in my proof. That's okay. It's an informal proof. Informal means it's kind of conversational. But part of learning geometry is to learn how to be formal. So maybe I should be trying harder. Uh, okay, if I was going to be more formal, I would have said um, six and eight are linear pairs. Given six and eight are supplementary by definition. Of, by definition of a uh, linear pair. Okay, so now I've established six nader supplementary. Here's my reason. Now you can say a uh, measure of angle four equals measure of angle eight uh, corresponding. You can say that we've said that six and eight are supplementary, but now we're going to use a little bit of algebra. We're going to say that measure of angle six plus the measure of angle eight are uh, equals 180. And that is definition of sup elementary. And then we're going to swap out eight because they equal it. Look, these two things equal each other. So we're going to do a substitution. M, mm, 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 plus mm, mm, four equals 180. Why am I allowed to do that? Substitution. Therefore, they are supplementary. Definition of supplementary. There it is. Pretty cool proof there. Pretty cool. I uh, challenge you one point extra credit for rewriting this as a two-column proof, formal proof.
Oh yeah. Okay, because of the exterior angle theorem, which says that this adds up to 180, but also all of this adds up to 180, and if you take this out of both of them, you're left with this and these two. This has to be equal to these two. So x equals 108. Ah. Uh-oh, 135 minus 87. Why do they gotta make it so hard? <sighs> if this was 80, it would be 75. But it's not 80, it's 87, so 68. I guess I have the answers. Do I? I'm wrong. Why am I so wrong? Oh, because 8 plus... 135 minus 80 is not 70, it's 50. Oh, off by one odd number, group of tens. What does it say? Find the value of x and the measure of the missing angles? Probably would have missed that. Anyway. Since you guys are so good at IXL, you did this like a lot. There's the remote interior angles. And combine like terms. And what? 68. Why did I do that? 60. Just 8. Tens combined to 0. Oh no. What's 120 divided by 8? Well, let's see, 80 divided by 8 is 10, 40 left over, 15. Checks out. Now you gotta go rebuild these uh, angles. And when you do, you get 80 degrees and 40 degrees. More algebra. I'll just give you the answers. 15, uh, x equals 10, and this is according to the book. I hope the book's right. And the angles are these two angles. 16. x equals 8. I'm not on the screen. Now I am. x equals 8, and the angles are 61 degrees and 50 degrees. Okay, cool. Did I assign the red? Oh, yeah! 5 and 8. 5, 8. Those are congruent because they're vertical. 2 and 6. 2, 6. Those are congruent because those are corresponding. 2 and 8. Eh. Those are same side exterior, but really I just do corresponding to here, linear pair to there, so they're sup. 20. 4 and 6. Same side interior, sup, three and five, uh, same side interior, sup, one and three, linear pair, sup, is that it? Yay!